This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. One day the devil came to him, for he was a minor demon. Asked him to torture some humans. With his two friends in tow, Middens and El Sapo, the Baron Mondo Van Duren, on Nightmare Theatre. All right, this was a completely new technology. Let me try and explain this again. It was a type of hamburger. Uh, it had a hot side, and then it had a cold side, and yet through forces that we really still don't understand, the sides never, oh, oh we're on. Uh, hello, and welcome back to Nightmare Theater. We're discussing great sandwiches as we wait for El Sapo to show up with tonight's movie. He ought to be here any moment now, I'm hoping. Hey, boss, hey, Mittens. Quick question. What if I told you I could make a million dollars in my spare time working from home? Now all I need from you is a small upfront loan for the investor kit, and then the sky is the limit. We will be rich in no time. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Uh, what would you be doing? Well, I'm not too sure about that, but once I send in the $225 for the investor kit, they'll send me a letter explaining everything. That sounds like some crazy get rich scheme. No, 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 check it out. It's a certified get wealthy in a short amount of time systematic plan, and it's officially endorsed by the National Council of Millionaires and Entrepreneurs. Wow, since you put it that way, I think you should order three kits. You'll get rich three times as fast. You know, that is a great idea. Will you give me the money? No, I won't give it to you, but I can lend it to you at a modest, mm, 80% interest compounded weekly. That sounds great, thanks boss. Man, you're dense. Let me ask you the obvious question. Do you have a movie? No, 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 I, I have been focusing on our financial future, but I think I saw one down in the basement. Can you show this while I run and get it? <sighs> Let's see. Chapter six of The Phantom Creeps. <sighs> well, Let's roll this while the doofus runs off to find a movie.
How'd you get out? Somebody left the door open and stole the meteorite at the same time. Did you see anybody? No, but a car just left. Yeah, I saw it. The neometer reacted to it. That's where it's gone, all right. Any transportation around here? I saw a car in a shed beside the building. Okay, let's go. Isn't that Captain West in the car that we left at our hideout? Yeah, and he's coming from the direction of the hideout. Follow him. Maybe he's got Sarka's gadget. Phone your office and tell Daly to bring the men. that meteorite with him, hadn't we better get it? He didn't. If he had that thing in the car, he'd blown the train clear off the track. Well, look, what's that coming? It's a G-Man. They're out of here. Pull up out of sight. when the train struck. Any of you men see this happen? He turns straight across. Where is he? Was he killed? We don't know. We just got here. He isn't in that car. Here he is. West is not dead. Are you all right, Bob? Let me take a look at him. What are you trying to do, young man? Break your fool neck? Take it easy. This is Captain West of military intelligence. That's Mallory with him. It's my own fault. Those crooks are right on my tail. I thought I could get away by putting the train between them. Oh, that's fine, sir. If you'll sign your name there. I'll send in my report. That'll clear you and your crew of any blame. Thank you, sir. I sure appreciate it. Back to the hideout and find out how Mallory escaped. Well, what's next, Bob? To find Zorka's meteorite. Come back to my place and let me look you over before you make any plans. Let 
newspaper woman is coming. Shall I grab her? No. Let her come in. Get out of sight, both of you. Dance with all of you at once. You Wait, a... You're on a spot. Who got away with Dr. Zucker's mystery box? Where is it now? <laughs> so you lost it again. I figured you'd bungle the job. Off fast, or somebody's going to get hurt. All right. I've been after that box of Zucker's from the moment he was found dead. I'd have had it and got a price for it by now if you'd left me alone. Wait a minute. How do you figure in on this thing? I thought you were supposed to be a reporter. Of course I'm a reporter. How else do you think I fastened myself to Captain West? I have everything all set, and you move in and upset the apple cart. Sit down. Maybe we'd better talk this thing over. There's no mistake about it. I was alone in that laboratory with the guard. He collapsed, and while I was trying to see what had happened to him, the meteorite disappeared. What do you mean, disappeared? It was gone. And the door, which had been locked on the outside, was open. I guess I'd better run over and look that place over. I'll see you at Zucker's late. Hey, have you any idea how the meteorite was removed, Doctor? None that will hold water. It was physically impossible for anyone to enter that room without my seeing him. Beg your pardon, sir. But you know Dr. Zucker was a very evil man. So it might persist even after the death of the body and return to continue its, uh, shall we say, uh, perfidious work. Ghosts don't carry heavy boxes around, Perkins. Hey, suppose Zorka isn't dead. But if he were alive, he would be seen and... Not necessarily. One thing Zorka hoped to do was to perfect what he called a visualizer. Oh, that's impossible. In the scientific world, nothing is impossible. Just as there are sound waves pitched too high or too low for the human ear, so there are light waves too intense for the human eye might be directed to envelop a human body and make it invisible. I've got it, Monk! I took it right from under their noses! The fool! No one can stand in my way. Neither Mallory's men nor Rankin's spies. Now that you have it again, we'd both better get out of here. The G-men are guarding the place. If they find this secret room... If they do, I have means of dealing with them. Here. This little device contains an invisible gas. Did you get the plan they asked you for? Yes, sir. This is the first step. It doesn't seem to be doing anything to the plant. And the second step is my Z-ray. Any living thing impregnated with this invisible gas dies under the Z-ray. You mean the human being? No, oh, a man first would go into deep coma. And then, 
I would stop one or two men, but more would keep coming. You seem to forget our iron man. Huh. Suppose you were my enemy, monk. What would you do now? Call him off! Call him off, I tell you! Call him off, I tell you! Well, I remember the chair and the gun. See if you stop it. Take him away, I don't like him. Now, do you still think my enemies will seek me here? Well, <laughs> let them come. I'll put the proposition up to the chief. If he wants to throw in with you, we'll let you know. I'm not asking for help. I'm just trying to show you how stupid you've been. Next time I do business with your chief or not at all, we're all after the same thing. I can show him how to get it. So where does he live? You'd like to know, wouldn't you? The chief wants to talk to you. He knows where to find you. We're leaving now. If you try to follow us... Best leg man, er, uh, girl on the staff. Who's in there? Nobody, I just... Get back inside, I want to talk to you. What is this, a pinch? Stand where you are. What's in there? I don't know, better look. Trying to get a story. You and Captain West won't tell me what's going on, so I decided to work alone. Alone, huh? What about those three masked men that just ran out of here? So you saw them too. That's the same officer that held us up on the road the other day. I trailed them in here. Ah, save it for Captain West. He likes fairy stories. I don't have time to listen. Go on, young lady. Now, Perkins. No, that won't do it. I'll have to try something else. What do you hope to accomplish? Some sort of ray that will counteract or neutralize a divisualizer. If Zorka is alive and has such a device, I'll find something that will make it useless. He's pretty sure to have the meteorite. But the meteorite is hidden there. This neometer is sure to locate it. I think there's some hidden room in this place we haven't discovered. I'm gonna make another search of it right now. Say, if uh, Jim comes back to the office, tell him to meet you there, will you, Doctor? Yeah. Prepare to receive him. We'd better get out of here, Doctor. We can't keep this place hidden forever. Sooner or later, they'll move in on us. Quiet. All right. But well, one of these days, we'll be trapped here. We're going to inspect the house. When Lieutenant Daly arrives, send him in. Keep everyone else up. Yes, sir. 
Someone's coming, Doctor. Close the ball. West inside the house. All right, keep this woman here. Say, wait a minute. I've got to get in there. I've got to write. Keep her here if you have to tie her. Yes, The Phantom Creeps, another hopeless ending magically resolved at the start of the next episode. The only good thing about this is Bela Lugosi. Well, Mittens and I are here waiting for El Sapo, that captain of industry, to return with tonight's movie. He really ought to be here by now. I, I can't imagine what's taking him so long. Hey, boss. Hey, Mittens. Well, guys, I scraped the absolute bottom of the barrel this time, and I found a film of sorts. Hmm, Track of the Moon Beast. Oh yeah, I know this one. This is a truly terrible movie. Worse than you can possibly imagine. It was filmed in 1972 and it sat in a vault somewhere, waiting, lurking, biding its time. Then in 1976 it went straight to TV and then straight back in the vaults, which is where you found it today. This film can should have a skull and crossbones on it because this thing is poison. It was directed by a guy named Richard Ashe, and this was the only film he ever directed. It's like he made this and then went into the witness protection program because of it. It would have been great if he'd have taken the film with him. Now, come on, I know it's bad, but it can't be that bad. Oh, it is. The script was written in a weekend, and I doubt they stayed awake for 48 hours. They had to sleep. So odds are the script was written in about 10 hours. You know, oddly enough, Bill Finger co-wrote the script. The Batman Bill Finger? Yeah, that guy. He helped Bob Kane come up with Batman. He wrote quite a few Batman stories starting in the 1940s up to the 1960s, often as a ghostwriter. But for some reason, he put his own name on this movie on purpose. The movie stars literally no one you've ever heard of. Astute viewers with keen eyes 
somehow might recognize the male lead from this film from BJ and the Bear and Sheriff Lobo. Claude Akins is in this movie? Oh Lord, no. Just some guy who played a cop on both shows is in this one. And that's the sole entire claim to fame of this film. Look, there's no getting around it. Let's just start this film and get past it. You know what? You do this. I, I won't be responsible for inflicting this film on the viewers. Oh, come on. It can't be that bad. We've seen lots of bad movies. This one can't be worse from the others. Let's try to be positive and try to get through it. But if you don't want to do it, I'll do it. Sit back, relax, as we present Track of the Moon Beast here on Nightmare Theater. asteroid is on a collision course with the moon. After the impact, astronomers will no doubt have to add a new crater to their maps of our already pockmarked moon. In any event, we will interrupt our regular programs to keep you informed of the now certain collision in outer space and to bring you any further bulletins from leading observatories or from NASA.
Hi, Paul. Johnny. <laughs> Johnny Longbow. Johnny, what? Sorry for rushing the Halloween season. It was too good to resist. What? You can come out now. Show's over. <laughs> Count Dracula, Dracula, sir. And better known on campus as Bud Keeler and Janet Price. Hi, do forgive us. <laughs> These, I'm afraid, are two of my students at the university. Unfortunately, I'm saddled with them for my summer field course, just as you were saddled with me. Not quite. You decided to switch from anthropology to mineralogy at the graduate level. Until that point, I thought you had a fair degree of sense. <laughs> was it you that made that god-awful sound? That was me, I'm afraid. <laughs> he also does bird calls, but don't get him started. Janet, like I keep telling you, an anthropology major these days should have more than one talent. <laughs> That's a talent? Bird calls? <laughs> I'm Kathy Nolan. Paul, Paul Carlson. Don't tell me you're a student. Miss Nolan's doing a picture story on the religious customs of the tribes around here, especially my own people. That's why Bud happened to have a ceremonial mask. Really, my idea. I borrowed the mask from the collection at the reservation to do some mood shots on location out here. But when we were heading back and I saw you and Professor Salinas explained you were a friend, well, I'm afraid. The bright idea of using it for a practical joke and getting some shots of your reaction was my idea. Thanks, I'm glad to know. I'm afraid we got more reaction than I bargained for. <laughs> I, I won't use the shot. That's a promise. Am I forgiven? Of course, Miss Nolan. Kathy, to my friends. We are friends. We are, Kathy. Uh, we were just on our way to Professor Salinas' place at the reservation. He's promised us an authentic Indian supper. Won't you join us? Uh, I'd like to, if it's, if it's all right with uh, Johnny Longbow. It's all right with me. No problem at all. Just follow my car. Um, why do you call him Johnny Longbow? Well, it's his Indian name. His tribal one. It translates warrior's bow that reaches long to its mark. Actually, he handles a bow like one of his ancestors. There's additional word from NASA this evening concerning the asteroid that collided with the moon two days ago. Radio telemetry from the seismometers planted on the moon's surface and previous Apollo missions have recorded the shock of the impact as beyond the end of the Richter scale. On Earth, this would be a disturbance that would rival the explosion in the 19th century of the volcanic island of Krakatoa. The impact on the moon has sent off a shower of fragments mixed with pieces of the asteroid. Some of these small fragments will enter Earth's atmosphere tonight, but they will undoubtedly explode into nothing more than a harmless shower of tiny meteorites, according to NASA officials. The greatest concentration of this meteor shower will be over the southwest region of the United States, this meteor shower will be, however, quite harmless, according to the statement from NASA, and likely to provide nothing more than a spectacular sight in the skies. And that's the story of the awesome collision on the moon today. This is Gary Kanan from our new center in Albuquerque. I didn't schedule a meteor shower as part of the evening entertainment at the reservation. It should be quite a sight. And this is a great meal, Professor. That's a great stew. Mm. What's in it? Oh, a lot of things. Chicken, corn, green peppers, mm. chili, onions. Uh, well, it's an old recipe around here. Well, if nobody minds, I think I'll have some more. Uh, all for the cause of research, naturally. <laughs> I'm glad that's what you call it. <laughs> You know, I'd like to get some night shots of this area. Well, if you don't mind me tagging along, I know a few great spots. But they're pretty far away.
That is a lizard. Oh, sorry. Things like that scare me. You get used to lizards here. They're quite common. That's why tribes in this area have so many legends about lizards. Like uh, what, for instance? Such as the story of uh, Lizard and Coyote, for instance. In the days before there were men on Earth. Sounds like it's going to be the uh, Navajo version of Genesis. <laughs> Ignore him, Professor. I'd like to hear the story. It'll have no effect on your grades. <laughs> I don't expect it to. I'd just like to hear it. Well, one day, before man walked on Earth, Lizard and Coyote were having an argument about what shape man would take. Lizard won the argument. They finally agreed that man's hands would be shaped like lizards. Four fingers and a thumb. Hey, that's right. Was that the end of the story? Not quite. Coyote drove a hard bargain. He agreed that man's hands would be shaped like lizards rather than his paws. But only, only, if man would be mortal and never again try to be like lizard. You can see quite a distance up here. Although we've got a lot more air pollution than we used to. That's Albuquerque over there. And that road leads to Santa Fe, northeast. And the river's over there. Paul, where are we exactly? I'm sorry. We're on the top of Sandia Crest. It's 10,678 feet up or down, depending on where you are and your point of view. Yeah, I'd like to come up here at night. It's one of my favorite places on Earth. It's always so peaceful, so quiet. Somehow above the rest of my life. Right on schedule. Paul, what's wrong? What is it? Paul, are you all right? What happened? A meteorite. A lunar meteorite. A meteorite? We heard about it earlier on TV. Yes, but here? Well, we're right in the area where they're due to fall. I guess we can consider ourselves lucky. What's the matter? You've got a scratch or something on your forehead. I don't feel anything. Oh, no, don't touch it. Let me do that. I must have bumped it when we hit the dirt. Let me clean it up anyway. See, you were bleeding. <laughs> That's nothing. Hey, Kathy. Look at that. souvenir. My own personal moon rock. <gasps> moon rock? Oh, wow. Did I say something wrong? No, but you just reminded me. I'm supposed to go into town tomorrow. There's a NASA exhibit at the university, and I'm supposed to cover it. That's a great idea. We'll go to the exhibit, then we'll have some supper, then we'll go out afterwards. It's in, just in case the moon rock hasn't cooled off,
cool enough to travel now. Have you got a first aid kit in that bag? A few things. Why? I'm still worried about that cut on your head. It could get infected. Look, I don't live far from here. And I've got all kinds of antiseptic in my medicine cabinet at my place. Your place? My place. Fine. Your place, then. nobody's home. My mother's in Europe. She travels a lot. Usually. Ty looks a lot like a dinosaur. Or like the dragon the Indians call Avenue. Thank you for introducing me to your friend. Well, I hope he didn't frighten you. Paul. It's us I'm really frightened about. And welcome back. We hope you're enjoying Track of the Moon Beast here on Nightmare Theater. Hey, boss, that pet lizard sure looked jealous when he kissed that lady, didn't he, boss? Well, let's, let's not get into that. Let's just recap the movie so far. First, a shirtless man digs a hole in the desert. Johnny Longbow shows up with a bunch of other people. Uh, a worried newsman breathlessly outlines an important plot device. They have a traditional Indian supper of stew and Longbow regales them with an Indian legend, and then a guy gets hit in the head with a meteorite? Oh, 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 that is no big deal. I've been hit in the head with meteorites many times. I've been hit in the head with all kinds of rocks. Lots of head injuries over the years, boss, lots of head injuries. Well, that explains a lot. Well, thank you. But hey, was there a scene missing after that guy described the legend of the lizard and the coyote? Listen to me. The lizard wanted humans to have hands like lizards but the coyote wanted man to be mortal and to never again be like the lizard. What does that even mean? Are lizards immortal? And why would the lizard want humans to have hands like lizards? Listen, I'm not the lizard whisperer. I don't know. But maybe now we know why that lizard was so jealous when he saw them kissing. Where have those lizards' hands been? L listen, I said let's not get into that. I'm more interested in the Indian supper. That stew actually sounds pretty good. Well, it's funny you should say that, boss. I gave up that get-rich-quick-at-home idea I was talking to you about, and I have decided that we should go into marketing our own hearty soups and broths, 
the boys in the basement and I whipped up this. Nightmare Theater's traditional Indian soup in a can? What is in this? Oh, you know, lots of things. Chicken, corn, green peppers, chili, onions, probably some lizard and coyote in there somewhere. It's an old recipe. You cannot sell coyote and lizard soup to people. But that's where the flavor is in the coyote. But it's also gluten-free. You can't sell that. Plus the word Indian is offensive. Let's get back to Track of the Moon Beast here on Nightmare Theater. Excuse me, I wanna get a closer look at this moon rock. used to doing things my, for himself. He's been a loner a long time. It's not easy to change. Even so. Tell you what. If Paul calls me during the night, I'll call you. I'll come pick you up. How's that? I'll buy that.
That concludes the national news. Now turning to the news of the local Albuquerque area. 25 people were stranded this afternoon for over four hours on the Sandia Cable Lift. The lift was halted due to a severe thunder and lightning storm which swept through the Sandia Range at approximately 2 o'clock this afternoon. No major injuries were reported, although seven people did request hospitalization. Also stranded atop the crest were some 300 people who were vacationing. Oh, go to hell, Sid. I told you what was going to happen when you came home again from that bowling alley drunk. I'm going to bed. And you can just sleep it off out there. Go to hell. for bringing the professor. Hello, Mark. What happened to you? The killing. The messy one. The medical examiner's report being phoned in? I'll make sure I'll have a copy of your desk when you get back at me. Good. Let me have copies of the other reports, too. All of them. Yes, sir. Fine. Check in the house and see if you can lend a hand. Now I'll tell you why, exactly why I asked you here. I was wondering. It sounded urgent. It's because I need an opinion from you. My field is in medicine. You know that, Mac. I know. So what then? One problem with being a cop is that eventually you think you've seen everything. Well, this morning I found out I was wrong. This is different. Uh, which one is him? The woman had a weak heart. And what she saw when she opened the door apparently finished her. There's no report of any violence on her. But take a look at the man. What kind of thing would cut up someone like that? Could have been a mountain lion, Mac. No, Jenny. Not that easy. I'm going to show you something one of my men found at the back of the house. Whatever. Killed Harris must have tripped over the garden hose and grabbed at the side of the house for support. Uh, take a break. I'll uh, check what it is. You're right. That wasn't made by a mountain lion. That mark was made by a human hand. Well, I would agree with you except for one thing. You tell me what kind of human makes a footprint like that. Now you get the picture, Jeff? When I got that radio call, I thought someone had made a real goof. But when I saw Harris, I had to believe it. Harris was killed by some kind of thing that was nearly seven feet tall. Had hands with claws on the fingers. And walked on feet like I've never seen before. That's why I had to bring you here, General. Now, you're right. This is not some kind of medical problem. I don't know what kind of problem it is. You're an anthropologist, Johnny. I thought, well, just maybe, 
might be able to help us. Well, I can't tell you. I've seen a track like that before. Where? In a museum. A fossil track. Several million years old. Have you men made a plastic out of the track? Hmm. We might get a better answer from the paleontology department at the university. The department had Dietz. He's a friend of mine. Let's go now. The casting should be ready. Wake up. to make breakfast for us while you hit the shower. Paul! I agree with Professor Salinas. Your casting is that of the left hind foot of some form of reptile, some very, very large lizard. I still can't believe that there are lizards that big in New Mexico or anywhere else for that matter. Sorry, Captain McCabe, you're wrong about that. There is a lizard we call Varnus comodensis. Uh, there's some photos of him over in the paleontology lab. Who grows to be all of 10 feet long. He's quite a fellow. The Indonesians call him the Komodo dragon. Gee, is it possible that one of these lizards is here? Somehow. I don't think so. And if there were one somehow on the loose, it wouldn't be what you're looking for. The Komodo dragon walks on four feet. This? indicates a lizard that can walk upright, some form of reptile closely related to the Tyrannosaurus rex. Thanks, Johnny. But how in the hell am I going to tell the commissioner or anyone down at City Hall? A man was killed on the doorstep of his own home last night by some kind of dinosaur. better than yesterday. Hi. Hi. Hey, they're pretty good. But you should see Johnny work with the boat. Our scholarly anthropologist here was the conference archery champ in college. I've seen his trophies. How about a little demonstration for our camp? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on, Johnny Longbow. I'd like to see you live up to your name. Johnny made everything himself. Even the arrowheads. Everything is authentic Indian. Okay, Johnny. Now let's really impress the lady from New York. Oh, 
Oh, okay, sure. listen. Okay, they're a crest. The Baron and El Sapo are, are coming, so I don't want any monkey business out of you. Do you understand? I don't want to interrupt your conversation. Everything, everything's okay. Ah, oh, welcome back, everyone. We're once again here, down in the sub, 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 sub basement, of the TV station with the mysterious curator, the man who watches over the Merrill Movie Museum, and he's brought us another item to show you folks at home from the world of television and movies. So, Mr. Curator, what do we have this week? Well, stop me if you've heard this one before, but three simians walk into a bar. Ah. Ah. Yeah. These are, uh, respectively, a gorilla, an orangutan, and a chimp from- And, and El Sapo. And me. Yeah. From Planet of the Apes. What was El Sapo on Planet of the Apes also? I was. I mean, let's, well, anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> okay. So these were from the 2001 version of Planet of the Apes, which is maybe not as well respected as some of the other Planet of the Apes films. But the important thing about that one is it's the only film that was made out of all the Planet of the Apes films where individual masks were made for every single character in the film. When you go back to the original films from the 60s and the 70s, they made some unique masks for the lead actors, but all of the background actors wore pretty much the same mask. You get to the more modern ones, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, etc. That's all motion capture, so they're all CGI. For Tim Burton's film, they actually made individual masks for every single character that you see on screen. So even in a background character, every chimp, every orangutan, every ape looks different from all the other ones. They all have distinctive features. Uh, you even had, like in this case, child characters where they made a smaller you know, mask to fit a child or they may have used a, small, a little person as an actor. And it but, must have taken an awful long time because the detail is amazing. Yeah, all, all hand-stitched hair, uh, which I believe they use yak hair. Just like his toupees, it's yak hair. And uh, everything hand-sculpted, handmade, and there were literally hundreds of these made for the film. And we have probably close to two dozen in the collection. And as you said, these were made by the great Rick Baker, right. who has been uh, honored with Academy Awards many times. But the Planet of the Apes themselves, that, those films, going back to 1970s, you know, the 1968 is the original, but into the 70s, uh, John Chambers, who created the original Planet of the Apes makeup, was actually honored with a special Academy Award going back that far. So these films have always been on the cutting edge of special effects. Yes, uh, and in fact, there was a lot of uh, consideration given to the more recent films with the motion capture, and somehow they didn't win for that. And uh, that was a, a great controversy because the motion capture on those films is absolutely incredible. Right, the great Andy Serkis, who's done so many amazing motion capture uh, characters like Gollum in the Lord of the Rings films, and-, and King uh, Kong and in the Peter Jackson King Kong, remake. yeah, exactly. And so he's kind of taken that into a new art form, although it's really amazing to see the work that goes into these pieces. They really are works of art. They really are very well done. Yeah, no, these, these are fantastic, and I, when you see the whole collection of them assembled together, it really is an impressive, feature of the museum. Well, we wish that the movie was impressive, but that's a whole nother story. So I blame Mark Wahlberg. Speaking of bad movies, why don't you get back to this one here on Nightmare Theater? Oh no, you're not talking me out of it this time. I'm staying. You need looking after. Did you take the aspirin? Yes, Master. There. That's better. Dark and restful. You should be able to sleep now. If you should need anything, I'll be right in the den, okay? Okay.
Okay, then. I'll open it. I'll open it. Wait just a minute. I'll open it for two. You'll open it for two. Right. I don't see it. I'm in. You're in for two? How about you, Earl? I'm going to stay for two. Okay. How many cards? How many cards? I'll take a pair. A pair will never win this game. A pair will never win this game, friend. I'm going to say the same thing as he does. Okay, okay. Two for you and two winning cards for the big winner of the night. Okay? gone in Chuck, but he did manage to say something about a lizard, a big lizard, a big lizard that walked like a man. Seems to me I've heard that expression before. Maybe. Something your friend Beats said about a dinosaur? The Tyrannosaurus. Well, there have been discoveries of supposedly extinct creatures dating back to the dinosaur age. Ancient life forms that are still alive today. Maybe there is a dinosaur still alive up in the hills. Something drove it out of the hills. Now it's on loose. Professor Salinas, those poor men murdered in the hills last night. Have the police found out who did it? Only some theories. That's all so far. Are those the reason for all that laughter when I drove up? <laughs> They're the pictures Kathy took at the NASA exhibit. You should see the one of Bud looking at the girl in the tight jumpsuit. <laughs> His eyes were popping out. <laughs> what happened in this shot? Oh, this one. I don't really know. It's probably a light leak or a lab error. It's on the original transparency, too. I was going to check with the lab in town later. How is he, by the way? Paul? He seemed a little better when Janet and Bud called for me before, but he still had a headache. I'm worried about him. Those headaches he's been having. He's been having those headaches since the day after that meteor shower. Mm -hmm. Didn't you tell me he hit his head in the ground that night when he tried to shield you from that meteorite that exploded? That's right. He got a cut on his head. A cut? More like a scratch. Just a little one. It's possible Paul may have gotten more than a scratch. A light concussion, maybe. Then you think... But the door. worry. <laughs> I said it might be a light concussion. <laughs> it's nothing really serious. I'll tell you what. I'll pick up Paul on my way. Take him to a hospital. St. Joseph's would be the best. I'll do a cranial x-ray. Check him out. He'll be back to normal and back to you in no time at all. The lab that did this print, it's near the hospital. I'll have that light streak checked out. Save your trip. Hurry up, Slowpoke. I want to get you off my hands. Then your lady can take over. Johnny, you're one hell of a guy. White man, speak with forked tongue. No, quick, let me write that down. Hurry up, will you? I got other things to do. What happened here? Where's Ty? I don't know. He must have broken out the night before last. Something scared him. Maybe the meteor shower. Is 
this the meteorite you found? Small personal moon rock. Funny thing, I've looked through every text I have on mineralogy, and I can't find anything like it. Of course, I haven't run a series of tests on it. Do you mind if I borrow your moon rock for a couple of days? Go ahead. I was going to take it to the geology lab anyway. Maybe they can find the answer to it. I can't. But right now, we're going to take you over to St. Joe's. Maybe they can find an answer to what's been bugging you. That's it. You can get dressed now. Well, I finished with your friend. It'll take about 20 minutes or so to process the plates. Dr. Sutton's expecting you. He left work you to wait in his office. Thanks. How do you feel? Not bad. Good. While you're waiting, I might as well do an errand near here. I'll be back in a little while. No sweat. Then it's not just some kind of error in printing, Mr. Hamill. Definitely not. I remember looking at the originals on that roll myself. What you see is what happened. I can't explain it, but it's not our fault or the fault of the film. Well, have you ever seen anything like that before? Never. I've been in this business for years. I'm Dr. Sutton. Would you come this way, please? I've looked at your x-rays. And? We don't usually discuss them with patients, but this isn't a usual case, Mr. Carlson. This is the normal situation, just to give you an idea. And this is the one we took of you. What does it mean? What's happened to me? You've been hit by a small particle of matter of some kind. Not enough to cause any pain because of the high speed. But it is there. Then something's inside my head? Yes. It's not uncommon. There have been cases where servicemen have survived with small particles of shrapnel embedded in their brains. This wasn't shrapnel, Doctor. So I understood. A meteorite, you said? What happens now? Now? Now we're going to keep you here for a few more days for observation. We're going to take more x-rays. If that area doesn't clear up, we're going to do something about it, surgically. I made these photos several years ago when I was doing research for my doctorate. They just might have a connection to your killer lizard. Well, at this point, I'd settle for anything in the way of a lead. Well, let's see. This is the first scene in the deer hide painting I was shown. Not many people have seen it. It's something like 400 years old. What's happening to the Indian in the painting? It's the beginning of the story. He's being struck by light that comes down from the sky. Well, what happened to him? See for yourself. Whatever struck him from the sky changed him completely from human form. He became a demon lizard monster. Arrows had no effect on him. Well, how'd they get rid of this demon lizard? They didn't, but he died anyway. It was consumed by fire. But where the flames came from, nobody knows. That's a mystery, and it's still a mystery after 400 years. I know what you're thinking. It's only an Indian legend, part of our tribal culture. I know, it's fantastic, but it's the one thing that ties in with what the fisherman said. He said the camp was attacked by a lizard that walked like a man. Now, I want your help, Mac. Well, we've got to 
place to ourselves. I had to close up early on my authority, and I, <laughs> I hope this proves something. I'll know in a minute. I never thought I'd see the day when I try to solve a case with Indian superstition. We are just about to find out. It should be somewhere just about here. What was that? I don't really know. My guess is that there's some unusual element in this fragment that synchronizes with that larger mass over there. And it produces some kind of energy reaction. You mean this energy or whatever it is? You're gonna turn a human into a monster? It's like in those werewolf tales? When there's a full moon in Transylvania? Johnny, I've known you for a long time. You've got to be kidding. I wish I was kidding, Mac. I'm not. Now, there is an answer. I think I know what it is. And it makes me sick to think about it. What you say is true. The x-rays, the way the meteorite reacted. And your Indian legend. Then there's something I've got to know from my own peace of mind. Maybe rough, boss. He's right, Paul. Nobody knows what may happen. Let's find out. How much time do I have? Be sundown in a half an hour. The moon will be up an hour or so after that. Before, before anything happens, I want to talk to Kathy. I'm sure that can be arranged. She's at the reservation. I'll phone her now. some idea of what he might have to go through just to prepare. I'll try. Why is he in there? Why are these policemen here? We're not sure what may happen to Paul after the moonrise. In fact, moving him here was his idea. But surely... Kathy, this is a hospital. We can't afford to take any chances. The moon is a strong effect on the earth. Look what it can do to the tides. In Paul's case, it may trigger a whole set of changes, a temporary mutation. I want to see him now, please.
I don't. I don't be wrong. Well, we'll know in a few minutes. Something's happening. Hello and welcome back. We hope you're enjoying Track of the Moon Beast. The soup doofus and I sure aren't. Soup is yesterday's news. I have branched out into real food. Hey boss, check this out. Uncle El Sapo's peanut butter tuna and egg salad sandwich with mayonnaise? No refrigeration required. You have to refrigerate tuna and mayonnaise. You're gonna kill people with this stuff, El Sapo. Well. I also have the Baron's Boiled Egg Soda. Now that would be perfect for Easter, but I do have to warn you, there are shells in some of these. But, grab a hold of your socks and look at this. Scent of Sapo. A cologne that smells just like me. You know, these are horrible ideas. Simply horrible. People do not want to smell like you. People don't even want to get close enough to you to smell you. Are you sure you don't want to try one of the sandwiches or one of the sodas? No, I don't. I don't, I, I, I think you should forget all of this stuff. Speaking of things that we'd like to forget, what are you making of this movie? Well, I will say this. I really liked that song, California Lady. How did a film with such a low budget land such a great song? Well, interesting story there. The singer was Frank Larrabee and his band was the house band for the Ramada Inn. The film crew was staying at the same hotel as the band and asked them to be in the movie. So they were. Wow. That must have been Larrabee's big break, huh? Oh yeah, Frank Larrabee is a household name, at least at his mom's house. You know what? I've also noticed the lead guy walks around shirtless a lot. What was the deal with that? Well, Sapo, in the 1970s, lots of men walked around shirtless. It was an era of letting it all hang out and doing one's own thing. Why, you yourself had that shirtless phase back in 1974. I sure did. Man, I was one handsome devil, wasn't I? No, no, you really weren't. But uh, let's return to the exciting conclusion of Track of the Moon Beast. It's almost over, folks, I promise. Then it's true. It was me. I killed all those people. That wasn't your fault, son. They won't convict you. They won't even blame you once the people know the facts. We'll soon have you back to normal, Paul. Do I need these now? No. Dr. Sutton's been in touch with NASA about your case. They're sending one of their top lunar scientists and one of the finest brain surgeons in the country. See, that particle of meteor in the front part of your brain, it's causing the problem. When it's removed, you won't have a thing to worry about. You can go back to leading your normal life. I'd like to see Kathy. Please. Please, we'll be landing shortly. When are we due in Albuquerque? In about 20 minutes. The captain got a message a few minutes ago. You and Dr. Lawrence will be met at the airport. I must admit I was pretty startled last night when I got the call. So was I. I've never come up against a case anything like it. And I've had a few unusual ones, I must say. 
We've been worried at NASA all through the Apollo program about the possibility that something could cause a mutated life form. Nothing ever happened until now. Oh, Paul. This is Dr. Rizzo. How are you, Paul? I'm going to be operating on you in just a little while. Glad to see you. What uh, happens now? We're going to make another set of x-rays just to check on the particle. The new set will give us an exact pinpointing of the spot in the left frontal lobe where it is. I thought you should see these right away, Doctor. I think we should look at these inside. What's the matter? I don't know. But I'll try to find out. If you look at the difference in the affected areas, you'll notice considerable change, Doctor. There's been a definite growth. From the look of it, I'd say the particle in that young man's brain has disintegrated and energy factors are spreading through his entire system. No question about it. Isn't there any way of neutralizing the effect, Doctor? That's your field, Dr. Lawrence. Is there something that can be done? We're dealing with a brand new unstable element here, one we've never seen before. We don't know its characteristics, atomic structure, how it reacts. There's a chance. There's always a chance. Eventually, by doing research on the meteorite fragments you showed me, well, we might learn how to cure your friend. But the time, you're saying, by then it'd be too late. I can't give you the timing exactly, but more or less what's going to happen is that the very presence of the moon itself, a moon rock of gigantic size, if you will, will have a recurring effect on your friend's mutation every night, just as the energy emitted by that particle in his brain was triggered by the small moon rock at our exhibit here. Eventually, the diffusion throughout his body will be complete, and that at that point, the situation will be atomically unstable. Then, the energy is released all at once. A form of explosion. Exactly. And when it happens, your young friend will be consumed by it. I've got to talk to you now. Let's go. demon in the tribal painting. Self-consumed. One Indian mystery solved. Oh, Paul, why couldn't there be time for us? There isn't. And that's why I'm going away. Now, if I'm gonna die, I want to die looking like a man, not like a monster. Paul, don't. I need a few minutes. I've got to get away from here. Get away where? I don't know. But I can't stand being locked up here again. Will I see you again? I, I don't know. I want you to go back to Dr. Sutton's office. And if anybody asks where I am, I want you to tell them I'm on the roof. That'll keep him busy enough for a few minutes. 
long enough for me. I won't do it. Kathy. Please. Do it for my sake. Do it because we love each other. Why did this have to happen to you? It did happen. That's all I know. I've ever seen. Does that kid think he can get away? He's not trying to get away. You don't understand. You just don't. A search has begun. Okay, young yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like a 12-gauge shotgun and some shells. Well, we have some very nice models just came in. Very nice guns. I'll be glad to show them. Here's a description of the man being sought, whose name is Paul G. Carlson. He's 24 years old, Caucasian, about 6 feet tall, weighing 160. Brown hair, a nice one. blue eyes, regular features. Carlson was last seen in the vicinity of St. Joseph Hospital. He's believed dressed in tan slacks and a blue sweater. We got a report on him. The owner of a gun shop says he tried to buy a shotgun, but left without it. I don't think he wants it as a weapon. He wants to kill himself. Why this no one? Because we overheard what Dr. Lawrence said in the other office. That's why. You might be wrong, Mac. He's on a motorcycle. If he wanted to kill himself... No, no, no. Crashes don't always kill people. He knows that. Now, he'd try to find some way that was fast and foolproof. We had some kind of lead on him. Anything. Yeah, I'd like to come up here at night. It's one of my favorite places on Earth. It's always so peaceful, so quiet. I can't stand this waiting around. I think it would be better if I went back to the reservation, don't you? I guess so. Uh, well, how will you get back? I borrowed Bud's car. I'll phone you if we hear anything.
They found the motorcycle. Where? Up in State Road 44. He took a spill. The bike is a wreck. But he'd probably walk away all right. They couldn't find him anywhere around the area. That road leads up to Sandia Crest. Of course, that's got to be it. Over the years, I got to know Paul pretty well. The one place he went to when he was troubled, the one place where he felt free, was Sandia Crest. <laughs> You've got to leave now. No, Paul. I want to be with you. You can't stay. The sun's going down. It'll be night soon. If I don't reach the crest before the moon comes up, then you can't stay. Oh, my God. 
happened? Where's... He got away. Two more men dead. Oh, God. It's too late, though. Not now. It's got to be stopped before there's any more killing. Are you going to try and stop it with a bow and arrow? Not with just any arrow, Mac. I'm going to use this. That looks like a piece of meteor palm head. It is. I've fashioned an arrowhead out of it. What are you going to do? Johnny, tell me! We're fighting something we barely understand, Kathy. The changes that are... A particle of matter from outer space is made in a human being. That's why I'm doing this. If a particle can generate all that energy, a larger piece from the same element might speed up the energy processes. Dr. Lord, Paul and I heard you in the hospital. You said Paul would become atomically unstable, that he would... It was always inevitable. This way it may happen a little sooner, that's all. Johnny, you can't do it. He's your friend, Paul. Paul is not Paul anymore. You've seen that. Kathy, he's not as you and I know him. Paul is gone. What you see in his place is nothing we know. Nothing human. No! That was a great ending, wasn't it? You know what I like best? The fact that it meant the movie was over? Amen. Are you okay? The movie wasn't that bad, was it? It couldn't have made you physically ill. You know, you were right about the sandwiches and the soda. I think I'm gonna be sick for a week. Well, speaking of a week, what do we have up for next week, El Sapo? We have this.
Sasorex sericidae. Looks like a small rat. Shrews as small as rats, perfect for scientific experiments, until they began to grow and grow into things. They must eat three times their own weight in food every 24 hours or starve. There are two or three hundred giant shrews out there. Monsters weighing between 50 and 100 pounds. That's as big as a full-grown wolf. Blood-curdling, horrifyingly poisonous monsters. There's the livestock. The shrews got into the barn. The wildest of flesh eaters, threatening all mankind. Your flesh will crawl with fear at their nearness. The shoes were out there. I couldn't take a chance. Oh boy, that does not look good. Not good at all. But we hope you'll tune in anyway as we present The Killer Shrews. In the meantime, may all your dreams be nightmares.